In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change the axis locations when plotting a trigonometric function, or any function for that matter, so that they are more consistent with uh, displaying information in the form that it probably should be, or at least in a much better formatted fashion. So here, you'll see that in my x-axis I have 0, I have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Um, this is not the result of running this code. When I run this code, notice there's a close also. When I run this, it's going to write over everything. Um, so we go from, or I'm sorry, our x-axis starts at 0 and goes to 2 pi, but we see our counting integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And again, this is because MATLAB by default steps by 1. So the first thing we want to do is we want to change the location of these tick marks. So the way to think about this is that MATLAB has generated this figure, at least this plot. And in this plot, there are certain attributes that are tied to the plot, and one of those is the location of the ticks. So these little ticks are tied to the, the plot itself. And then the numbers, or at least the text that's displayed at the location of those ticks, those are tied to the ticks. Okay, so both of these are properties of the plot, or at least of the axis, but we're going to talk about this in a form where I want you to think about there's a figure, the figure has ticks, and then each tick has its own string. Um, this follows an example provided by MathWorks where if you Google MATLAB change axis labels or some form of that, if you click on the first link, there's a nice example. Um, this tends to confound some students, so that's why we're going to step through the explanation of this. Um, so again, they are plotting something different from what we are plotting. So we're plotting one period of the sine function. They're plotting, plotting several periods of the, the uh, cosine function. <clears throat> they're going from negative 10 to 10. We're just going from 0 to 2 pi. So there are some distinctions. We'll talk about those along the way. They also generated their plot using a little bit different methodology. They created a linear space, or I'm sorry, a line space. Starts at negative 10, goes to 10, 200 points. We used 629 because we discretized our setup by 0 0.01 from 0 to 2 pi. Um, it, pick your poison. doesn't really matter. Uh, the point is this. Their plot starts like this from negative 10 to 10 and ends like this with all of these 3 pi's, 2 pi's, pi, 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to take the text from their example, and I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it right in here. Now, here's the thing. When plotting one period of a sine function, we actually just go from 0 to 2 pi. But if we went from 0 to 2 pi, again, MATLAB would step by our counting integers. So we actually want to define a step so in there, we're going to step by pi over 2. Now, for right now, I'm going to suppress, I'm not suppress, I'm going to comment out the x-tick labels because, and let's go ahead and comment this out. When I run the code, again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then when I uncomment the tick labels, I'm sorry, the ticks, now we have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi, and, three, and 2 pi. So I have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, sorry, and 2 pi. I don't know if I said that right. Um, but that's the nature of starting at pi, stepping by pi over 2, and ending at 2 pi. So now this matches our conception of what a one period of the sine function would look like. But at those locations, we don't want to see these uh, numbers with all of their decimal places. We want to see the pi's. So I'm going to uh, uncomment this line. We have... 0, 1.5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ticks. So I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh oh, we have more than that, um, labels for these locations. So I'm actually going to delete all of the negatives. We have 0, and then we have pi over 2 is our next one, our next label. And then we have pi. Next is 3 pi divided by 2. And the last one is... 2 pi. So before we go any further, let's just talk about this string of text right here. Uh, hopefully at this point you've seen the fprintf function. If you have, you've used the slash n. This is a slash pi. They both come from the same, uh, or they, they come from the same phenomena. We're going to utilize an interpreter to provide us with a character or a keystroke or a symbol or something um, that we couldn't use using the symbols, characters, and keystrokes available to us on a keyboard. So this is basically code within code. So this is slash pi. That slash pi creates those pi characters. So now when I run this code, I have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. This is uh, a much cleaner way of altering the axes than other methods. It also follows the tutorial in MATLAB, but I want to show you one more thing. So I'm going to go ahead and suppress this. Um, and I'm going to prove one thing. I made the comment. Oops. I'm sorry, not suppressed. Let's comment. I'm going to say x tick labels. And I want to create 
a completely different set of strings. Let's go ahead and say Monday, uh, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday. Okay, we had five. One, two, three, four, five. So now we're going to have one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to show you that the text associated with these tick locations doesn't have to have anything to do with the numeric value of those ticks. So now I have one period of the sine wave that goes from Monday to Friday. So this, in this example, again, I wanted to show you how to change the locations of the tick marks on an axis and how to change the labels that are placed at each one of those tick marks. So I hope this helped and thanks for watching.